All right, so just like chapter four, chapter five is a large chapter, and so we've broken it down into three lectures for you. So in this first lecture, we're just going to do a quick review of mitosis and meiosis, so you have those processes down, and then we'll go into the cell cycle and cell cycle clinical pearls in the following lectures. So first, mitosis. This is the process by which cells divide into genetically identical cells, so that's the key differentiator from meiosis. So you start mitosis with 46 chromosomes, and then each daughter cell has 46 chromosomes. And so this would be called 2n. n is equal to, in the case of humans, is 23. And so since you have 46, it's 2n. Same thing here, 2n. All cells in the human body are produced via mitosis except for the gametes. And that makes sense. Gametes are for reproduction, so you want to produce genetically unique individuals versus mitosis when, you know, say you're reproducing cells in the kidney or the GI tract, those organs you don't need to create genetically unique daughter cells. It's, you just need new cells to replace the old cells, carry out the same function. So over here we have a diagram that gives you an overview of, of mitosis. You have interphase first. This is where the DNA is replicated before it undergoes cell division. Then you enter into prophase. Then prometaphase is a subphase between prophase and then metaphase. Then you have anaphase. And then you have telophase and cytokinesis, which is actually the cell division part. We'll go through each of these over the next few slides. So we'll go over the cell cycle very briefly. We've touched on this in previous lectures, and we're going to talk a lot about it in the next lecture, but just to remind you of the phases. So first you have G1, and the S phase is where you have DNA replication, okay? Then you enter the G2 phase which is where then you're getting ready for the M phase, which is mitosis. Now, G1 through the S phase, through G2, this is all interphase. And then my, the M phase is prophase through cytokinesis or cell division. Now, when, during DNA replication, this is when you go from 46 chromatids and 46 chromosomes to 46 chromosomes and 92 chromatids. So let me explain this. We'll go to this whiteboard here. So you have a chromosome here. This is a centromere. And then this gets replicated during the S phase. And then you generate this like this. And so each of these is what's called a chromatid. Now a chromatid is a newly replicated chromosome. So you replicated this and generated this. So this is a chromatid. And then this is called a chromatid as well. These are what are called sister chromatids So because you have two together. This combined is called a chromosome. So you have 46 of these these pairs essentially, and then you have 92 of these after replication. Then you go through the phases of mitosis, and then you eventually pull these apart during anaphase, as we'll show you, to where you have these. So you've pulled them apart, and these end up in the daughter cells. So then you have 46 and 46. And that's 46 chromosomes and 46 chromatids. And that's how you maintain the same level of chromosomes throughout cell division in mitosis, is by replicating them, keeping them together, and then pulling them apart into two separate copies. So after interphase and the G2 phase, you've now entered into prophase, which is this is the beginning of the M phase of the cell cycle. So during this, the chromatin then condenses into chromosomes, and then the nucleolus disappears. So then you enter into this pro-metaphase, which is sort of a subphase between prophase and metaphase, and the nuclear membrane breaks apart, and you can see that starting to happen here in prophase. And then the polar microtubules push against each other. You can see that beginning here, and then you can really see it here. And then these centrosomes are on opposite ends here at the ends of the microtubules that are sort of coordinating all this, coordinating the microtubules, joining with the centromere of the chromosomes, getting ready for the metaphase. So during metaphase, you've now, the microtubules have now coordinated the alignment of these chromosomes along the metaphase plate where they're in a single line 
down the middle of the cell because during cell division, you're essentially gonna pull this cell apart into two cells. So you gotta get these here and then you're gonna pull the chromosomes apart so that you can equally divide the chromatids into each daughter cell. And so that's what happens during anaphase is then you begin to pull the chromatids apart. And so you've had this here. So again, each of these units is a chromosome and you have 46 of these. Each of these is a chromatid. So these are sister chromatids. They're genetic copies of each other. This is a chromatid. And then at this point, you still have 92 of them. You've pulled them apart, and then you, and then you pull them apart like this to where then you're gonna have like this. And that's what you're seeing here. So this would be here, this would be here. Telophase, the nuclear membrane begins to reform, and you can see that here and here. The nucleoli reappear, and the chromosomes unwind into chromatin. So you've separated the genetic material equally into each potential daughter cell, and then you're getting ready for cell division. And that's where cytokinesis is. So you have myosin 2 and the actin filament ring contract to cleave the cell into two daughter cells. So you have that happening here. And then the daughter cells are what are called diploid, meaning they each have 46 chromosomes. So then you've split the cells into two daughter cells where they have 46 and 46. So now they're chromosomes because you've, they're now called chromosomes again because a chromatid is just a newly copied chromosome. You've be gone beyond that point. You've pulled the chromatids apart. And so then you have 46 chromosomes and 46 chromosomes. So again, just to summarize, you have interphase. This is the G1, S phase where you replicate. You go from 2N to D. D refers to the number of chromatids to 2N, 4D, because you still have two chromosomes, and then you have 92 chromatids, because D 1D corresponds to 23. Then you enter into the G2 phase, now, and then at this point, all throughout here, you're in the M phase, prophase, nuclear membrane begins to break down. You have these centrosomes beginning to form, centrosomes pull apart, and then the microtubules start to coordinate with the centromeres on these chromosomes. Then you get to metaphase where you align them along the metaphase plate, and then you get ready for anaphase where then they're pulled apart. As they're pulled apart into these opposite ends of the cell, then you have the nuclear membrane that reappears, the nucleoli reappear, and then, you, and then you enter into cytokinesis where the cell divides, and you get two daughter cells with 46 chromosomes in each, and these chromosomes are genetically identical. All right, so now we're gonna go over meiosis. We're gonna use this figure that's in your book. This doesn't have every single step of meiosis. It really just outlines the two phases, meiosis one and meiosis two. So meiosis is a cell division process, and it consists of two rounds, meiosis one, meiosis two, that produce four daughter cells. So you can see that here. And the key thing here that differentiates it from mitosis is that each daughter cell is genetically unique and distinct from the parent cells. So each of these are genetically distinct from each other, and they're also genetically distinct from the original cell here. So you have interphase, just like you did in mitosis. So again, just to review the cell cycle, you've got G1 like this, and you've got the S phase here where you've duplicated the DNA, and then actually in meiosis, you actually skip the G2 phase and go right into the M phase. So then again, you're gonna start with a chromosome like this, and then you're gonna duplicate it in the S phase. So you start with 46 chromosomes, and this is gonna be 2N, 2D. You're gonna duplicate this, and then you're gonna produce And so you're gonna have sister chromatids here connected at the centromere. So again, this is a chromatid. So remember a chromatid is just a newly produced chromosome during replication. And then this pair of sister chromatids is a chromosome. And at this point, you're gonna have 46 of these and 92 chromatids. And at this point, the genetic material is still identical. You haven't had any crossing over yet, so at this point it's still identical. Then you're gonna go into meiosis. So interface is 
followed by meiosis one and then meiosis two. And then each of these consists of the four phases that you saw in mitosis. So prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, and cytokinesis. So meiosis one, just an overview. So the purpose here is to divide homologous chromosomes into two daughter cells, which reduces the number of chromosomes in each cell by half. So it's called reductional division. And so first homologous chromosomes means that it's, this, it's analogous chromosomes, one from the mom, one from the dad. So we could say this is D for dad, this is M for mom. So these carry analogous genetic material. It's just that you've, you've inherited one from dad and then one from mom. So then you're gonna divide these homologous chromosomes into two daughter cells, as you can see here. So you can see this pair here was then divided, it was divided here, and then this pair here, it's up in this cell here. And so each chromosome, remember, so we'll go over here, this is a chromatid, this guy here, and then this is a chromosome. And I keep repeating this just to make sure, because they can be confusing and I just wanna hammer it so that you remember it easily. And with meiosis one, remember you started with 46 chromosomes and 92 chromatids. And this is 2N4D. Then you go to, at the end of meiosis one, you produce these daughter cells. So you're dividing these in half. So you're giving 23 to one and 23 to the other. So you're gonna have 23 chromosomes. So each daughter cell will have 23 chromosomes, but then each daughter cell is gonna have 46 chromatids. And so it'll be 1N2D. And that's because you're dividing these pairs. So you're dividing this here, and you're passing these pairs onto here, and these pairs onto here. And so you have 23 pairs of chromatids. So you double it, and that's how you get 46 chromatids in each one. So each of these has 23 chromosomes. 46 chromatids, just like that. So prophase one is just like prophase in mitosis. So you have chromosomes condensing together like this. You have the mem nuclear membrane breaking down like this. And then you have homologous chromosomes that come together to form a tetrad, which is four sister chromatids. So this right here would be homologous chromosomes. And then since you have one, two, three, four chromatids, four sister chromatids, this is same, we're referring to the same thing, it would be called a tetrad. And remember, one came from dad and one came from mom. The other key thing here in prophase one is crossing over of genetic sequences. So you go from this, you have pairing up of the homologous chromosomes to forming these tetrads, and then you have crossing over that occurs. So as you can see here, this genetic material went here, and this genetic material went here. Same thing here. You had this go here, and then this go here. And so now you've, had, you've developed genetically unique material. So then you have metaphase, which again is similar to metaphase and mitosis. And then you have the metaphase plate, you have the centrosomes on opposite sides, and then you're gonna have the homologous chromosomes line up like this. And so this pair has lined up here, and then this pair has lined up here. And so you have ones on either side, because remember, you're gonna eventually gonna pull these to the side during anaphase, and so you're gonna equally divide these homologous chromosomes. One, in this homologous pair, one is gonna go this way, one's gonna go that way, same thing here, one's gonna go this way, one's gonna go that way. Because remember, you're dividing the homologous chromosomes up between the daughter cells. So again, if we show anaphase, similar type thing as you have in mitosis, you got the centrosomes like this, and then you got the microtubules like this, and you're pulling apart the homologous chromosomes. So you see this pair here, this is a pair here. You know, remember one from dad, one from mom. This is gonna go this way, this is gonna go that way. This is this, this, is this other pair here. 
Again, one from mom here, and then one from dad here. And then you can see that here in the figure, eventually you would have had, you split the cell and you have, you know, one blue one, one red pair, same thing here, one blue pair, one red pair here. And the end result, again, you want to be aware of for anaphase is just that the homologous chromosomes are pulled to opposite ends. So then you have telophase and cytokinesis. This is similar to mitosis, chromosomes decondense, and then the cells divide to yield two haploid daughter cells. So what do we mean by haploid? Again, you've reduced the number of chromosomes. Remember, reductional division. So you've gone from 46 chromosomes to 23 chromosomes, and you've gone from 92 chromatids to 46 chromatids. Because remember, each of you have 23 of these, and then you have a chromatid like this, and you have 46 of these. So 23 pairs of chromatids, essentially, in each cell. So now we get to meiosis two. Now we're at this phase, and meiosis II is incurring it in both of these daughter cells. So the sister chromatids in each daughter cell from meiosis I then separate. So this is a sister chromatid, this is a sister chromatid. So these are going to then separate from each other, just like here and here and here and here. And then they're going to be segregated into the four daughter cells that are produced. So as you can see here, this guy went here, this guy went here, this guy went here, then this guy went here. So you're segregating again. And this is called equatorial division because you have 46 chromatids and you're gonna divide them up equally into the daughter cells. So you have, 40, you have 46 here, you have 23 here, 23 here, 46 chromatids here, and then you have 23 here. And that ends up being 23 chromosomes. And since you have 23, this is 1n, 1n, because in these end result here you have one chromosome, one chromatid, and this is what's called haploid. So you pr produce four haploid daughter cells. And here, just a point here, sister chromatids are likely not identical. So as you can see, and you can see that here, this isn't identical to that, this isn't identical here. You can see that same thing down here because of that crossing over that occurred during prophase one. So prophase two, similar type thing again, as prophase one, you have that nuclear membrane that's gonna decompose, break down, chromosomes condense, and then you have the centrosomes that are moving apart like this, and eventually ending up in opposite poles of the cell. And then again, you have metaphase, where the spindle fibers of the centrosomes will attach to the chromosomes at the centromere and then align them along the metaphase plate, so just like this. So in this case, it would be this guy was aligned here, this guy was aligned here, and again, aligned by microtubules right down the center of the, of the cell. Because then what you're gonna do is pull these apart during anaphase, they're gonna pull these sister chromatids apart and pull them to each side. So then anaphase two, similar to anaphase one, except you're pulling these sister chromatids apart. So like this, so this chromosome got its sister chromatids pulled apart. So this guy went this way, this guy went this way. And then same thing down here. This guy went here, this guy went this way. And so eventually they're going to be pulled all the way to the ends so that then you can undergo telophase and cytokinesis where again the chromosomes decondense, the nuclear membrane reforms. You have the nuclear membranes forming on each side. Chromosomes are decondensing like that. And then they divide during cytokinesis to give you four haploid daughter cells. So again, 23, 23, 23. And again, that came from 46 being split here in here. So again, we say it again here, they're haploid, meaning they had half the number of chromosomes as the original cell. Remember the original cell had 46 chromosomes and thus only have one copy of each chromosome. And then just to whiteboard this again one more time, just so you have a summary. If you think you have it down, you can skip over this part, but just so you can have it down. So again, we started with one cell. 
and it had 46 chromosomes, and it was 2N, 2D. So then you went through interphase, where you went through the phases of the cell cycle and underwent DNA replication, and then you produced still one cell, 2N, 4D, because then you replicated these and generated new chromatids. And so now you have 46 chromosomes and 92 chromatids. Then you go through meiosis one, where you had, and again, this would be homologous pair of chromosomes, because again, one would have came from dad, one would have came from mom, same thing down here. And then you've split these like this. And then here, your 1N, 2D, because then you have 23 chromosomes, 46 chromatids, because you've reduced the number of chromosomes by half. Then you undergo meiosis 2, where then you equally divide these chromatids. So you're going to split these 46 chromatids up in each one into four haploid cells. So again, you started with a diploid cell with 46 chromosomes, and then you produce four haploid cells with 23 chromosomes each. And remember, gametes are the major cells in humans that undergo meiosis. So in males, this will produce spermatocytes. And then in females, this will produce oocytes. All right, so that wraps up our review of mitosis and meiosis. Next, we'll talk about the cell cycle.